Hello friends, today we are going to be understanding undefined value returned from a function. Uh, a function can include the return statement, but it doesn't, it does not have to. In the case that a function doesn't have a return statement, when you call it, the function processes the inner code, but the returned value is undefined. So here they give you an example where they uh, declare a variable where the sum is equal to zero, and then they're declaring a function called add sum with a number as an, passed in as an argument, and the sum is equal to the sum plus the number. And then here they're saying the variable returned value is equal to add sum three. So they're saying they're adding this to here, and then the sum will be modified, but returned. The value is undefined. The value is undefined. Hmm. Add sum is a function without a return statement. Add sum is a function without a return statement. The function will change the global sum variable. I see what it's saying. So this is the global variable sum, and this will be altered by calling add sum. So if they add sum and they add three here, this actual um, sum will be three now. But the return value of the function is undefined, which means that when they call this function, the return value is undefined, but sum becomes three. So I hope that that helps. We want to create a function add five without any arguments. This function adds five to the sum variable, but its return value is undefined. We only want to change things under here. Create a function add five without any arguments. So we want to create a function with that function called add five. Let's start with that function add five. This function adds five to the sum of the variables. Uh, so yes, yeah, sum is the global variable here. And so add five just goes sum plus five. And it returns undefined. So it doesn't have a return. The way to make it so it wouldn't return undefined is we, we could say something like return true. This would break the code. We don't want to do that, even though it would be, I don't know, this is, a uh, funny example. And so add five should be a function. Add five is a function. Sum should be equal to eight. Well, let's look at this. Sum is zero. And then we're saying add three. The computer's storing the function add three as a function that's possible to be called. And then it's also storing add five as a function which is possible to be called. Finally, it's saying the returned value is equal to add five. So what it's doing is saying sum is equal to add five. Yeah, it's, it's, so sum is equal to add five. So what we're doing is saying zero, which is up here. So this renders out to zero plus five is equal to five. It should equal eight. Hmm. I'm going to run the test real quick. Okay, so here's what's happening. <clears throat> We're assigning add three as a function. But what we need to do in order to get this, okay, so the sum is the overall variable. This is a function that adds three to the sum. This is a function that adds five to the sum. At the end, we want the returned value to be equal to eight. We want sum to be equal to eight. So what we need to do is say add three. And then this should pass the test. Sum should be equal to eight. Inside your functions, add five to the sum variable.
Oh, I see what's going on. I need to make some uh, plus equal five. This will pass the tests. Okay, so what happens here? Okay, so here I'm console logging out sum. You can see that the sum is this variable. The variable starts at sum of three. Here they're using this very um, verbose uh, way of describing. So here, okay, so what's happening? Sum is equal to zero. The computer remembers there's a function that says that you can add three to sum. And then we run down here, and then it says add three. And so we're running the function. So we go back up here, and we say, okay. So we, we, we start through here, and then the sum, which is the variable. Now we're, we're using this variable name, and uh, using it to be, the, this variable name is equal to the sum, which is equal to zero plus three. So sum becomes equal to three, zero plus three. And then we move down here, and we remember, add five. This is exactly the same as this, except for there's a five. Um, I, this could be re written the exact same way if I were to say sum plus five. Um, and so now we're remembering that this is the function that makes it so that we can say sum is equal to sum plus five. Right now the sum has become equal to three. And so when we come down here, the returned value is add five. And so we're running add five uh, to the return value, and that gives us eight. Um, it's three at this point, and then it goes three plus five is equal to eight. Sum is equal to eight. Sum is here, eight. Uh, a way we could uh, make it more explicit, we could console.log the sum here and make it a sum after add three. No, this won't be after add three yet because we need to actually call the function. You see right here, if I were to say sum after add three, that's not actually valid because we haven't called it. We've just allowed this function to become part of the computer's knowledge. If I were to move it down here after we call the function, because this is how we call functions, we'll see that the sum after add three is here. And then, um, Yeah, the returned value is after we add five. And that's how we get the eight. And then, uh, yeah, so this should pass. So at the end of the day, all you need to do, yeah, this pass, passes the test. Uh, this is a little bit tricky, but at the same time, this is just kind of like the mindset of JavaScript. So it's good that if you think that you enjoy this kind of puzzle type thing, then uh, that's, this is the kind of stuff that I enjoy. I like thinking about why it's happening the way that it does because it always breaks down to a very solid logical core. So hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next one.